what can you hear? Because it was the same thing with me. I could hear only certain things and some things were too far from me. It's like when I was, um, I think it was 22, then I read Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. And Did it have much impact? I, I, no, I like <laughs> the first chapters, like I like the concept of now and then I was, okay, this guy, uh, I don't understand him anymore, let's throw away the book. I think when I was about 25, I, um, I read a book, uh, The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. And for me that felt like a liberation, like, okay, uh, there's nothing more beyond what I can see. Uh, it's okay to be in a rational mind. And um, in, a, in a way, I became a 100% atheist. I didn't even doubt it. Now this. It's almost it gave you it gave you relief. Yeah, it was because you were seeking total relief. Or since you were a teenager. Yeah, yeah, I remember I was at the Christmas dinner with my uh, parents-in-law back then, and um, we were sharing. We did a round around the table. Okay, what was the biggest thing for you the last year? And I shared that I became the became the atheist. Like, okay, this was such a good thing now. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. And I think for about five years that that was okay that that was my way of looking at reality and what we are living in and i and i, and I loved it I, I think i needed that period in some kind of way but um after a few years it was like okay but what am i actually doing why okay there is success now but when i look at myself does it give me true does it give me a, me a feeling of true meaning or purpose now mm -hmm. And I, when I looked at all those so-called important people that I was working with, I saw that they were not happier than the average human being. They were just working harder for a goal that didn't mean something. I don't know. And I think they, they didn't know either. So for me, it was a turning point in um, getting back to that question again that was important to me since I was a teenager. Like, okay, who am I and what are we doing here? So I entered the process of, well, I found a, a coach to talk about this subject and I read some other books and I went into nature more by myself. And it was a you know, major transformational process to me. And slowly but steadily, um, I found myself in a way. And much more than kind that. of brushed off a lot of details there. So the mentor that you found was he. The he. How did you come about this person? Well, I um, at a certain point in time I booked um, a Tai Chi uh, master, a Japanese uh, guy, for the business platform that I was running, and then um, my contact person um, to book this guy was called Laurens. He was an executive coach. And uh, so he co coordinated a bit of organizing that day mm -hmm. to get him here in the Netherlands. And I thought, well, well interesting guy. He, he says some things that are different than I, um, than I heard before. And then, well, we had that day and it was successful. And after a few months, I, um, I entered that process of, okay, What's yeah? What's next? And I don't know why, but I just thought, okay, maybe I should uh, schedule a, a meeting with this guy Laurens because he seems to know something. <laughs> so I um, I booked a session with his uh, secretary, and 
I was sitting there for our first coaching session and he started with, uh, okay, why are you here? And then uh, I told a bit of my story and that was the beginning of a, well, a very slow process, I think. At the, at, I think I had five or six conversations in a period of one and a half years. So it was, I was taking it really slowly. I never booked a new session right away, only when I felt like it. I even remember one time, I think it was a Friday afternoon, and I had a session with him and I came at his, uh, at his office and I was totally pale. I hadn't slept. It was a very typical long working week for me. And he said, well, we're not going to do this session. Wow. Yeah. He took it seriously. He took me seriously and he took himself seriously. The interesting thing with him was that normally in a coaching session, then the coach asks you questions. At least that, that, that is what most people think that is a coaching session. But in his case, I think most of the time he was talking and I was just listening. Like, okay, yeah, that's interesting. And What's the most profound thing he said to you? That you remember, if you remember anything. Yeah, it must have something to do with the uh, connectedness of everything and that everything is energy. And back then I, I think I thought, well, why is this guy who I take seriously talking about this kind of stuff? Um, but at the same time I thought, well, maybe there's something in there. He seems like a wise man. Uh, maybe it's not bullshit. So that was kind of the process that I went through, like slowly but steadily, he could go a little further in what I, he was saying to me and I could hear a little bit more. Actually, you mentioned that earlier when we were speaking, you said you couldn't hear it. Yeah. Like you couldn't hear yeah. what he was, his true message, you couldn't hear it. Yeah. It took you a year and a half. And even then, I think um, he's still guiding me today and he's, uh, He's in the ultimate state with his, his consciousness and that state you cannot put into words. So still I cannot hear everything he's saying. And that I think is in general the way how consciousness evolves in a human being. You can always hear just one step further down the road. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. Well, there are some there are some catalysts, I think, but no shortcuts. So, so at a certain point in time, it was the fifth or sixth session, he said, he maybe even said something like, okay, we've, we've, we've been talking for one and a half years now. <laughs> I've been pulling at you for a long time. I think it's time now for you to, to stand up. I was like, what? What are you talking about? Time to stand up? And, um, and he said, well, to really make this an important day for you, I will send an invoice for this conversation. It was just 80 minutes. I will send an invoice for this conversation of 1,500 euros. And normally it was a portion of this. I was like, huh? <laughs> and he said, well, I know this is not professional, but uh, otherwise I am not able to reach you. So I was, okay, uh, well, just, uh, just send the invoice. And I went back into my car. And okay, what am I going to do? What do, I do? what do I need to stand up for then? That's the, That was the message. That was the $1,500. Yeah, probably he said more, but I still couldn't hear it. <laughs> so I was still not reaching a level in myself that I could make contact with that um, gave me the answer. And... Um, well, I remember in that car right away, I said, okay, well then, I tried out many things in my life just for entertaining uh, uh, experiences. And okay, maybe I get the answer there. So I think a few weeks later, I had the most amazing, profound experience in which I realized with a very deep knowing that everything is one and you are that one. You are that one consciousness, that one energy. and um, you have the experience of being a human being here. And for me it was, yeah, I was in shock for a few hours and even for a few weeks, like, holy f how 
I was so wrong with all my convictions about about reality. It's the total opposite. And I was blown away by this realization. Experience like this is an experience and it um, becomes a mind thing. It's not integrated at all. So it was my catalyst, but it's not, it's not a shortcut. Mm -hmm. You have to do the real work. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned that as well. So in, you can take many substances or you can smoke weed or harsh or whatever you do. It's not the real thing. It's uh, just something that can show you for a tiny bit, but then you have to go inside yourself. And then you have to do your meditational stuff or go into nature uh, and get yourself in the present state. And then you can expand your consciousness in a way that is sustainable. And then it goes even deeper. And then you get to profound insights that are more pure. It's all in yourself. And that's where, the, that's where the real journey is. But what happened after that moment? It seems like you let go of the company that you had built, that you grew to like 750 CEOs that were in the network, and you let that go and you started Origin. Can you speak a little bit about that? Mm. Well, at, at first, when I came to the realization, that when I felt that knowing that that oneness of everything and um, how you are it and that we are on a journey together on a journey back to source that was a deep realization back then that night and at the same time I had the realization okay but I have a role to play in this like many others I have a role so I came out of that night and was like okay um, let's do this not knowing what it is, but it just, I felt that my path was there. And at first I thought, okay, but then I have to leave my company, uh, the Open Business Leaders Company, because it's not about that. And um, then several people within the company said, but maybe you can try to incorporate it in what we're doing, because we're inspiring many leaders, so we can inspire them on this thing as well. On this thing, it's... <laughs> most beautiful thing there is but and that's what I started doing I think for about one or one and a half years to make it part of the program um, so to have a part of the program about the spiritual spiritual journey in in many ways and I think that worked out for a bit but I realized after a while that that was not the reason why the company was founded and you cannot Mm. change something that, that was founded for another reason. I realized now that there needs to be something new wants to come into existence. So then my journey started, uh, okay, how can we do something with this and create a journey which is about deepening your consciousness. But then as a leader, as an entrepreneur, because I like working with impactful people, and of course leaders and entrepreneurs, they have an impact on the people within their companies, mm -hmm. but also the products and services they, okay. they create. And in a way, I think entrepreneurs can be the mo are the most impactful people in the world with what they're doing. And everybody can be an entrepreneur, small or, or, or on a ground scale, it doesn't matter. Everyone is a creator. But if you can help to help creators to create from the inside out, from a deeper state of consciousness, then we can create a more loving and beautiful reality in which we live in harmony with ourselves and with, with each other and with nature and just do the stuff that excites us the most. So that was what, what I felt was, okay, that is my purpose to contribute to creating a platform that enables this. So slowly but steadily, we pivoted in a few years time to what now is Origins. So within Origins, you have a structure that you tailor content based on the level in which the, per the entrepreneur is coming in. So you have people that were yeah. super skeptical, never even thought about this, to all the way to people that are meditators. And how do you call these events? The roast? Roast of your leadership. Roast of your leadership event that you conducted yesterday. The first thing you had us do was feel our body. So you had us standing up and just trying to feel. Mm. Which for a lot of people 
especially driven people and uh, technical people, they don't necessarily want to feel. Because we're so used to being focused on everything that is not ourselves. You're focused on the outside world and the thing you're wor things you're working on, but never even one second on your own body or yourself. So it's new, and what's new is, um, for most people, feels they don't like the unknown. But when you, when you start to like the unknown, it's the most beautiful thing there is, I think. Thank you.